I toured a Royal Cape Majestic 53 catamaran. My wife and I are considering this boat to take to the Virgin Islands as a charter vessel. And we want to know if you think we should buy this boat. Use the comment fields to let us know your thoughts about this uh, tour. And like and subscribe to our channel if you could please to help us get this channel underway. The bright work on the boat isn't very well taken care of. There's not a lot of bright work and you see the missing plank there, but they just really haven't put any finish on it and have left it to the weather. There is a very cool platform across the back of the boat that is a cooking area and a fish cleaning station. It's got hot and cold running water. I'm not really crazy about the big stretch caulking that you see there, keeping those, uh, those surfaces watertight, uh, but it's a pretty functional surface and would be pretty convenient with a lot of storage. Uh, the helm is a decent helm. It's got some updated Raymarine electronics, which is pretty nice to have. Uh, so we certainly can't complain about that. There is a lot of new stuff on this boat. This is new. Yeah. Uh, the ice maker came with the boat. It never worked and they just didn't fiddle with it. If it's something that you want to do, you can see if you can get it running or... Uh, I see you opted for the... Uh, the Foam, what do they call this stuff? Yeah. Is it a sea, sea deck? Or? Exactly, yeah. Super soft and comfortable underfoot, good grip. Um, they made this custom bench seat. The projector's new as well, so you've got movie night over here. Yeah. That's an additional fridge. There's a deep freeze under the table here. Yeah, I saw that. I don't think I was looking at this Royal Cape, but I was looking at uh, one in a boat show, and I think. Nice. Oh, the beer. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. Oh, it's like, <laughs> touch. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, fun. yeah. Uh, that freeze. So, fridge section and a freezer section. That's in addition to the refrigeration inside. Yeah. It's got that new LCD projector screwed to the hard top and it's coupled with a pull down projection screen that you can pull down in front of those doors if you want to have a movie night or work on your computer. It's got a good surround sound system built into the pillars there. Lots of comfortable seating around or at least places for a bunch of people to have kind of a movie night. Uh, there's a stand, uh, another seating over there that's like a helm station but there's no helm on that side. Uh, the surfaces are just looking a little tired. It is a 2009 boat, but you can kind of see that they're not terribly clean. They're in okay shape, serviceable, but it's what you're gonna expect for a boat from this age. These are very cool boats. Yeah, that's pretty unique. They do most of their cooking out here. Yeah, So that's the extent of the solar. They've got some wind generation, yeah. right? And the panels up top. On Were the there some panels up there that I missed? Yeah. I didn't look at. It was reported at 1500 kilowatts of uh, solar power that comes into the batteries. The uh, cushions in the cockpit look like to be in excellent shape. It's got that brand new washer and dryer, but then on the right hand side, that fridge isn't working. Uh, so that's something to consider there. And now we'll walk forward and take a look at the floor deck. It's got the big heavy rails that we liked on the custom 50 Stella Mars. The only other bits of bright work on the boat are the dolphin seats and that center gangway that needs some finishing. And that anchor chain is pretty rusty. There might be a little bit of an investment to be made there. Lots of four deck space. Life raft and life jackets up top. The detachable sun covers that go over the windows seem a little faded, but I don't think that's a really big deal. Uh, you're going to get a good look at the deck space and that rusty chain that we might replace. Uh, the trampolines look like they're in great shape and probably they've been replaced pretty recently. Boat well, sitting on anchor, not a mooring ball right at the moment. We're actually anchored. controls. It's been reported that the sails are relatively new, replaced in the last few years. This boat checks in at 44,000 pounds displacement, so it is not going to be a fast sailing boat. But at 44,000 pounds displacement, uh, we can at least expect a more comfortable ride in heavier seas. 
Got some sail plan that allows for some sail overlap. Moving inside, the Royal Cape's got a very spacious galley with a big uh, two-well sink uh, and little drying rinsing area there in the center. Lots of storage. You're seeing a convection microwave right there. Uh, we're going to see a four-burner stove come around to the right here in a moment. Uh, and a pretty decent oven underneath there. Uh, the uh, the surfaces on the galley are looking pretty good, but still kind of dated for 2009. Uh, and when we get to look at the leather in the main salon seating, it, it's, it's in good shape, but it's just looking a little tired, a little worn, and that might be an area of investment. The table opens so you can seat as many people as, as you can sleep. Yeah, we could get a whole crew for sure. Yeah. This boat just is set up with a ton of counter surface, cabinets, storage. You can bring along just about anything you want. You see the printer sitting there. There's great, uh, nice spice rack and places to hang fruit. And my biggest fear is I think that 44,000 pounds of, of displacement tear could easily turn into 88,000 pounds of displacement fully provisioned. It's got that refrigerator up top and a freezer down below there that you're seeing. It's in pretty good shape. The stainless steel is showing the age a little bit. The electricity is very cool. You can actually run both 220 and 110 volt on this boat from the generator, uh, as well as the shoreline systems. And the electrical panel is uh, very well kept, up to date. Uh, lots of, of uh, systems on this boat, too many that I'm going to go through here. Uh, moving down into the port hull and looking at the aft cabin, um, both the aft cabins are kind of mirrored on this boat uh, where uh, you see a double bed there, a uh, queen size bed. Down below on the right or the, outside, uh, the outboard side of the hull is actually a place that you can tuck in another person. Uh, to put three in this cabin if they weren't very big, you know, depending upon the size of the crew, this boat could actually sleep as many as 12, which is a pretty uh, decent number to, to fit in your crew if you want to carry that many. This is the ensuite head. Take a quick look at that tile. We're going to talk about that here again in a second. And then we're going to step forward from the aft cabin through the midsection into the midship dressing area for the owner's cabin. Uh, this is quite a nice space for the owners, as you will see. A nice touch with the wine rack in the owner's cabin. Just not sure why it necessarily has to be here, but. Uh, from an aesthetics point of view, it's pretty nice. And a great uh, makeup surface work area. There's something spongy right here. The floor has been damaged, subfloor. It's not stable. Maybe some signs of the water damage. I wonder if uh, that's going to be the shower and the head up there. I wonder if things maybe got wet and ran out here, got in there. Oh yeah, pretty spongy here. The Royal Cape 53 has got one of the largest owner's cabin of any boat that I've seen, of its size anyways, and it's got this massive king size bunk area. Uh, with a lot of headroom even in the bunk, you could set up quite easily in the bunk and not bang your head there. Uh, and it's got this grand uh, gangway where you climb up and down that gives the, the cabin a very stately feel to it uh, and provides a lot of storage underneath as well. Uh, then moving into the bathroom, we're going to talk about that tile. So here in this part of the boat, this tile needs a little bit of attention for sure. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of getting beat up and banged up there, and it might be, what we're seeing there, might be related to that water problem where we have the spongy floor in the master cabin. So this is a real tile that has been tiled against these surfaces. It's showing a little age, but since it's real tile, the tile could be replaced for sure. It's a fascinating 
shower area because you can stand up in there but it's also a tub you could clog it and actually take a bath if you really wanted to not certain if it's just hasn't been cleaned or whether that dirt has been embedded but there the fiberglass isn't particularly clean Shows the age of the boat. Some indication of mold growing in the ceiling. So I have a feeling that's probably they use this shower. And if they don't get this hatch open for some reason because they're running the air conditioning, then when they use the shower there's obviously no vent in there so if they're using hot water all the steam's just going to roll out into here and that's what's going on there of course the mirror is showing a little bit of uh, water damage too coming in there starboard side aft bunk Got two teenage girls on board going back to land. Tons of space, storage space, shelves. It's really quite the boat. The starboard hull has a slightly different configuration from the port side hull, which had the owner's suite. Uh, this hull has a midship cabin and head built into it for a fifth cabin. Again, this boat could potentially sleep as many as 12 people. This is the starboard hull midship cabin. Wet head. forward one they're using is a tool burner gun, which that. is great on the storage. Uh, there is room enough in all these lockers to put that all the way if you wanted to. Oh yeah, there's a ton of space so on this boat. The, boat the midship cabin is not as big as the other cabins. I think this is a little smaller than a queen, maybe like a double, but uh, two people that knew each other pretty well could probably function in there, or one teenager maybe. They do have a lot of stuff stored in that forward cabin and the forward head that we'd have to get cleaned out so we can make sure we can inspect any, everything. And I've got to wonder where that mattress is because it certainly wasn't on the boat. So we might end up needing to put a new mattress in that fore cabin. A lot of stuff stored in the forward shower. Tough to see what's behind there. Again, more indication of mold and dirt and things like that all around. But it doesn't smell. No orders. Seems like a dry boat. So the mechanical is really on the newer side. As you heard, replaced in 2018, both engines with well under 2,000 hours, and the generator replaced about the same time, and it also has less than 2,000 hours. Uh, so uh, they were in pretty good shape. They weren't super clean uh, mechanical spaces. Uh, you're gonna see some running rust there, but I think that was attached to an old system that was leaking and got replaced. You can kind of see the old brackets there, and I think that that's what that is. And it's been fixed. Um, so that's the tour. Let us know what you think. Should we buy this boat? Would you, would you buy this boat? Uh, what are the things that we should look for? Uh, please use the comments, drop us a line, uh, and let us know if this is the boat that we can take people chartering on in the Virgin Islands. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.